Hey guys, um, I'm back doing another video. I know, it's so crazy. Um, so we had like a crazy month at work. Uh, I'm taking these next four days off um, just to, you know, hang out. So I took like, I guess it's two and a half days. I don't know why I just said four. But uh, I'm going to make some videos for you guys. So what are we talking about today? Man, some underhyped fucking knives. Um, now, these are not still being made. And like a lot of shit on my channel, you're going to find, like, when I was a kid, I didn't have shit for money. So like, I couldn't buy any of the knives that I wanted and I saw growing up. And I remember seeing this one on YouTube and people were like, you know, it just looked cool. Like, I wanted a Lion Spy. The SR1 in titanium was fucking huge when I first got into knives and I was a kid. And I was like, okay, well, I fucking love Spyderco. I like Lion Steel. Like, th this is pretty much a no-brainer. Um, and I ended up picking one up not too long ago. And let me tell you, like, I do not know how this knife was not more popular during the hard-use phase in, um you know, the EDC community. I mean, the 0560 was like hard use. I would put this up against a 0560 any day because the way I look at it, I look at it from like a practical standpoint. Like what is realistically gonna break or happen if you're really using your knife hard? Like, honestly, probably worst case scenario in my life, I can tell you I'm not going to break the blade. Like, I don't do shit like that. I, I don't have an intense job, you know, prying open car doors or anything. Like, I don't cut garage doors. I saw something on uh, Instagram they were talking about, I think it was the Cold Steel Raja 3, and they said like, oh, a knife that can cut through, gr like, garage doors. Like, but it was coming from a company. I don't know if Cold Steel said it, but I sent I sent it to a couple people I'm buddies with on Instagram. Um, yeah, so realistically, what's going to happen if you're using your knife hard? Okay, good question. Um, either the washer slash ball bearing is going to get fucked up. Um, what else could happen? Probably the lock bar would e either slip or deform. Those are like the big three things, okay? Um, and then like edge related things, of course. You're not gonna bust the stop pin out, I promise you. If you do, send me a picture and prove it. And take a video of what you did exactly to do that. Like, realistically, what's gonna happen? You're gonna pry, like, you know, doing something. This is Teflon washers, tough as nails. I don't care what anybody says. You're going to be prying. You're probably going to get a little bit of flex. And I've seen this happen before. I've seen it with the 0560 from ZT. Um, and I saw just due to, like, the uh, the flex in it. Or it could have just been, you know, someone pulled the liner. But the liner popped out. And then it was kind of left like this. Except that knife's on ball bearing. So it just swings around. This one is very smooth. But it's almost like a, I don't know if you guys have handled like a Hinderer XM18, like one of the old ones on Teflon washers. That's exactly what it feels like. So, buttery smooth. And then same goes for this. I actually like this one a little bit more. And I'm going to get into that um, in just a bit. But, yeah, so... What I like about this, and like guys, this isn't like practical for me, so like don't think that I'm out pulling my knife out of my pocket, the whack, and then I'm turning, turning this to, you know, cut a fucking sandwich. I'm not, but I think that this is actually sort of nice, because, I mean, it's steel on steel, you guys can see that, lockup's great on this, no play, um... No stick, no slip, nothing. And I've put, you know, some poundage behind 
uh, this knife and uh, the lock bar doesn't travel which is nice a lot of ZTs do that but um, what was I saying oh yeah steel on steel um, reason why people started doing titanium in the first place is because it sticks to the blade tang and you know it, it just secures the lock up a little bit better um, so what's nice about this is like you just turn this and now like if you really do think that your knife is gonna fail you don't have a fixed blade it's not that's not what you have you don't have a fixed blade you have like a reinforced frame lock so I mean and frame locks especially tend to do this if you are gonna pry you know like this your finger can always lift that lock bar up just Sometimes it'll happen there. Or if you put a lot of force, this one can't can't do anything to it. Um, yeah. So one thing I can't stand about this fucking knife is the pocket clip. It is sharp as nails. Um, it's hard to take out of your pocket. It's hard to get back into your pocket. Uh, really, that's the only complaint I have, and that's what's keeping this from being my favorite of the two this also has a convex uh grind hold on i'm about to sneeze <sighs> oh fuck Whew. that was a big one all right so this one has a convex grind it's still honestly it's thinner than like um I don't know, it, it reminds me of like a 0350 ZT. Um, what else? Maybe like... What's something common that people would know? It's, it's almost like it feels the same as a PM2. Um, so, not super thick behind the edge, which is a good thing, especially for the little guy. Um, he's a little bit thinner, um, just, just from feeling it. I don't have a measurement for you guys. I wish I did. Um, so this guy to me really just about fixes everything that I dislike about this. Pretty much just the pocket clip. So what are you getting with this? You're getting a bomb pocket clip. And I know that you guys, you love your deep carry your knives fall out, you lose them, you, you know, I, I don't know what you guys are doing, I don't really care for deep carry, but I don't mind it with this knife, um, and I also don't really mind it with this knife, um, so, I mean, I guess I'm not opposed to deep carry, it's just, I don't care, um, this knife really is a much better, <laughs> more EDC friendly version of this, and... Honestly, guys, like these days, I'm so in love with the military, and it's so well worked into my life that, like, a knife of this size is just redundant. I don't need to carry two almost four-inch blades with me at any given time. It just doesn't make sense. So, what do I do? I throw this guy in my front pocket. I throw a mini griptilian in my front pocket. Maybe that Spyderco slip joint that Steve uh, traded to me for that pair of three um what else what else do i throw in my front pocket um shit maybe like a salt one there's got to be one more i think that's it maybe oh 0350 i carry that a lot this knife kind of reminds me of the 0350 uh it's a little bit smaller a little bit um I'm not going to say it's a better knife, but certainly, like, it's just, it feels higher quality. That's about all I can say. Um, so, machining is actually done a little bit differently on these two. I don't know if it's on purpose or on accident. This has really clear, crisp machining. And then this has like little weird things in between. 
Don't know what's going on there. Centering on both of these is not amazing. <laughs> and something else I noticed is that the lock bar has a cutout on either side. Not sure why. I don't know what the advantage or disadvantage is of that. Um, what else can I say? Oh, one thing I think is real cool. Here, let me see if I can. I like this. I like that it's a fat piece of titanium, fat piece of G10, and they go like meet in the middle. I think that's really cool. Um, I think the clip is sort of placed on there. Eh, I, you could say I'm not the biggest fan of that. Here. I guess it's not going to show up on camera. Yeah, but both of these have those roto blocks. Um, honestly, I think that these are great knives. They both have LMAX, uh, which is one of my favorite steels. Um, to me, it, both of these sharpened up really easily. They came with a convex grind. Uh, I took care of that. I just, what did I use? I think I used, where's that diamond plate? Somewhere. I used uh, one of the diamond plates Steve gave me, and uh, I just, you know, roughed it up a little bit, and then I took it to a 600 grit edge. Pretty typical from me. Um, yeah, but honestly, I think um, if I were to pick between the two, I'd have to pick this little guy. Uh, I think that before they were discontinued, they were clearanced at a buck fifty. So not bad, especially for like a fat piece of titanium and uh, a knife made this well. I mean, seriously, these feel, um, they're not lightning quick um, by any means, but they feel almost like, like a hinderer. That's all I can, like, and I think it's the Teflon washers, guys. To me, there's just no hiccups in it. There's nothing. It feels like it's on a pocket of air. Like a, an air hockey table, <laughs> almost. Um, yeah, but really, if you guys can find these, like, I highly recommend both of them. I don't think you're going to be upset with either one. Uh, yes, I did try to do a pocket clip swap. No, it did not work. Um simply because it would just hang out here. I know it doesn't look like it on camera, but uh, like the spoon part right here would just sit like right on that edge and it didn't work, but I tried, I tried. Um, these also have, it's just a normal Torx. Uh, they came with the tool to adjust it using like these four prongs or the four holes. Um, that's not really something I do. I just use Torx, so, yeah, but if you guys are looking for, like, a hard-use knife, um, that's also practical, and, like, I can't say fit and finish is amazing on these, because the blade centering, and, um, which one is it? Yeah, even, like, back here on this one, actually, no, it's fine. <laughs> But, um, they, like, the feeling in hand, it feels like such a nice knife. Like, you can just appreciate this knife. Like, sit, sit on your couch and play with it for an hour. And it's just so easy to appreciate. Like, the 3D Machine Titanium, 3D Machine G10, and then the action is so smooth. And they cut well, which is amazing. Detent is uh, decent. These are a little bit over four millimeter thick blade, um, and it goes all the way through, so it is a heavy blade. Uh, I think this one weighs about seven and a half ounces. Actually, maybe six, I don't know. And this one is like three or four. This one, honestly, is something that you'll notice in your pocket just because it is so wide. Um, 
One thing that is just very off about this is the spider hole. It's very big. And like a lot of people are like, oh, I love a big spider hole. Well, this one's bigger than like the Para 2 in the military by like two millimeters. So I think it's a 15 or 16 millimeter hole. I could be wrong on that, but I mean, like it, it's, it's insane. But all in all, let you look at the lockup. Um, I love these knives <laughs> and they've been with me for quite a while which I thought I was going to buy both of them. I bought them together. Uh, I thought I was going to buy both of them, get the discount, sell this one, keep this one. But if anything, I think I'd probably sell this one, keep this one. But that's just me. All right, guys, if you get the chance to buy one of these, please do. I promise you won't be disappointed. Um, I know I say that a lot, but these are... Like, if you're looking at, like, a ZT-0300... This will fucking beat it. If you're looking at like a 0560, this will fucking beat it. Like, practically speaking, this is like my number one hard use knife. Um, aside from like the 0350, just because like for me, I don't exactly need a hard use knife. So like, it's a, it's just a little easier to carry. Also, with the rotoblock engaged, no movement at all in either one so there's it's not like the liner just kind of like crkt you can still kind of move the liner this one that roto block goes on bank vault done like not moving anywhere so yeah let me know what you guys think maybe you guys own this knife maybe not it's not something that you see all over instagram youtube social media in general so I, that's that's why I like making these videos. I just think that they're really cool knives. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing a cut test. I think I'm going to do it with this one uh, where I test um, Spider Coast L Max because ZT's L Max did so well that, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm just curious to see how it will hold up. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all are having a great day. And I'll see you in the next video.